Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we praise you and bless you tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is a good thing that we're here tonight and better things are yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Something wonderful has been accomplished in your life. It's, and as you heard me say on the screen, this is a, something I had to learn many years ago. You're only a beginner once. You only begin once and the rest becomes history day by day. Isn't that wonderful? And you have this sense of accomplishment and you should. You keep advancing. Something wonderful has been done. Let's go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. If you have your iPad with you. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 4. And um, Well, let me read the scripture first. Very first verse. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Oh, that has a new ring to it, doesn't it? You are now stewards of the mysteries of God. And I'm, I'm thinking again, it's just big in my mind. I can, I can see it at 53 years ago and, and, and it's on all of the students are there. And I'm thinking about what happened after that, what's happened over the last 53 years, what's been going on. There are students all over this world. And I could tell you some things that would change that tassel on your cap. One particular thing in a terrible situation, an assassination attempt, terrible, terrible terrible deal. And right as they came through the door of the, of the ER, rushed to the door of the ER, there was an ORU nurse had her hand on this man and praying in tongues as they went down the hall. It wasn't the president. It was the other man. But they were all there praying for the president also. Made history that day. And that man lived and they thought he could not possibly live, but he did. An ORU tongue talking nurse. Wow. Isn't that just about as exciting as you can think? Think about where you're liable to wind up. Well, all right. Must be found faithful. The key word here is found. Where, where will they find you? Are you as faithful in the middle of the night in an emergency as you are when it's easy? You must be found faithful. That means you get up in the morning faithful. You're faithful to God all day. You're faithful to God everywhere you go and every word you say are words of faithfulness. Hallelujah. Faithful to God, utmost faithful to your Lord Jesus Christ, the one who loved you and gave himself. Was he faithful to you or not? Yes. Faithful to God, faithful in little, faithful in much.
Let's take a look at Luke 16, 10. This is a- absolutely one of my favorite verses of scripture in, in this whole area. Luke 16, 10. Thank you, Lord. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. It's rather easy, one thinks, to be faithful when you have a lot. No, it isn't. That's when it's more dangerous than ever. You get to the point where you're not so faithful anymore. You just have a lot of everything and you really have to be prepared for that. But when you're faithful with little, John D. Rockefeller, raised by his, his dad was an alcoholic and his mother was a, was a Baptist, taught him to tithe. And she insisted that little John tithe. They had nothing. He said, if I hadn't tithed when I had little, I never would have tithed on the first million. And after that, I would have never tithed at all. And then he was heard to say, and I would be worthless today. You don't hear that about Mr. Rockefeller, but that's a side of him that's well hidden today. He's a tither. Praise God. Now, faithful Stay where God puts you. Promotion comes from above. I don't want you to ever forget my words tonight. Don't you ever, ever try to promote yourself. No, you don't. That's not your job. Your job is to promote Jesus. Your job is to promote the word. I'll tell you. Mylon LeVever had been used to making a lot of money as a gospel rock singer. And he, he, he was raised in a Christian home, but got away from God, became a hopeless drug addict and got saved in a concert and God instantly delivered him from drugs. Had no job, no place to work. So he went to his pastor and became the church janitor and was glad to get the job. And look where the man is today, just because he humbled himself and refused to promote himself. I've seen it over the years. I've seen things that thrill me to no end. And I've seen things that really bothered me about people promoting themselves. I'm not talking about bad people. I'm just talking about people that made a bad choice. Well, I know God called me to big things. Now I knew, I knew when I was a student at Oral Roberts University, 30 years old, Gloria said I was the oldest freshman in the world. I guess I was, I don't know. But I had already, I I heard it in in my spirit. God began to talk to me about nations and I didn't have money enough to get out of town. But I knew it was in there. But I, I didn't want to talk about it. And the Lord began talking to me about the prophet's ministry. 
for a couple of years bef before Brother Hagin called me out. And I, I made a deal with him then. I, I just walked in the office of, of the teacher and was thrilled with it. I loved to teach faith better than anything in life. And I, I said, Lord, and this is back in the day, if you said you were a prophet, they, yeah, right? There were not any, there were no prophets. Are you kidding me? There's only pastors and evangelists. I said, Lord, I'm willing. I am willing, but I am not going to announce it. You're going to have to announce it. And I just forgot about it. Didn't, didn't care really anyway. I just forgot about it. And I went along, 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 along a while. And I was preaching or teaching rather at a camp meeting, 1977. Oh, I can see it in my mind right now. The platform is just about like this. And they the speakers that had been speaking during the convention and some of the uh, Rama board members were up on the platform. And I, there was one row in front of me and I was right behind Brother Hagin. He finished preaching. He preached on the bones of Elisha. I preached on it this morning. The bones of Elisha. And he had finished and started giving an invitation. And so, of course, our heads are down and, and he's giving this invitation. And I heard it right in here, get on your knees. I said, no, Lord, I, I, I'll call attention to him. He said, get on your knees right now. Well, I just slipped out of my chair and the minute my, my, the second my knees hit the floor, he said, yes, uh, yeah, I'll tell, oh, yeah, uh-huh, that's right, yes, I'll tell him. Ken Copeland, I mean, just as my knees hit. He said, you're gonna have to stir yourself up now. You're gonna have to move over into that healing ministry a, a little sooner than you thought. You're not getting ahead of God, you're keeping step with God. Now, listen how the Lord phrased this. He fixed it for me. He said, whether you want to or not, you're going to walk in the office of the prophet, the seer, the seer standing right in the pulpit. You will see it like you saw it run off before your eyes on a television screen and you'll be able to minister to the people. Amen. Now, I've also seen this. This happened at Rama, and, and it, it hurts your heart when you see things like this. Now, now, of course, you have to understand it. It's rare because these are quality people. But people that said, God called us to be here. No doubt he called us to be here. And then after a few weeks, well, God's called us to, what? Well, yeah, he's, he called us. He's, he's called you somewhere else. Oh yeah, he's called us somewhere else. I'm thinking about one, one situation. Yes, he's, oh yes, he's called us somewhere else. And so there was a continued conversation and continued conversation. And the bottom line was, we didn't get the parking place we thought we ought to have and we're leaving. Really? Stay put. When you know you're where God sent you, just take it as the best job you've ever had. Be faithful there. Be faithful. Be faithful. Sweep the church floors. Whatever you need to do, you help that pastor. Well, he doesn't do like I think. Well, you're not the pastor yet. You just do what he thinks is right for him to do. And you just be a good, a faithful servant of the stewards and the, be a steward of the mysteries of God. And you begin to pray for your pastor and you begin to pray for the people. I've seen very little front door <laughs> of convention centers 
in hotels. I've seen a lot of nice kitchens <laughs> as you go through the back. And I don't know, it's just, I don't know, just something about me. I, I, I love working people. And you, you go back through those kitchens and people are working there. I, I, I almost get in their way, don't I, Jerry? <laughs> I get in their way, man. I'll stop them and pull them over here and, and hug them up to me and everything, all right, everything's going good. Oh yeah, mister, yeah, 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 we like you guys. Amen. Who is that guy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who he is, some preacher. Or something. And they asked me, who are you? I said, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'd gone to Branson and uh, to some of the shows there and Gloria and I did. And, and um, <laughs> Mel Tillis, uh, God bless him. He, uh, I, I was going into another theater and I met him coming down the sidewalk. I said, Mel Tillis. He said, Kenneth Copeland, are you preaching somewhere? I said, no, sir, I just came to town to, to see some, some of the shows. And so he said, if you were, I'd come. And so I went to his show and he had us sit right down in the, in the front there. Gloria and I was sitting right here. And in the break, people came over there and sat down on me and said, are you somebody? I said, no, I'm nobody. Oh, I thought if it were, I'd get your autograph. <laughs> I'm just nobody. But I'm a, I'm not a great man. I'm a man with a great God. Man with a great God. So be faithful, stay put, and let Jesus by his spirit lead you step by step by step by step by step by step. I don't know how many of you were able to see Bill Johnson during the, the convention. He gave an illustration about the dove, the Spirit of God landing on Jesus. It so marked me, he took his pocket square out of his, out of his coat pocket and laid it up on his shoulder. And he said, a, a dove is a very nervous little animal. And, but he was right there and Jesus was aware of the Spirit of God on him all the time, all the time. He's, he's right here. You're leaving this place and going on to great things. Something wonderful be found faithful. Now the charge, and you know the charge, Second Timothy chapter four. Thank you, Lord. Oh dear God, how I love it. I, I'm thinking about the day that I was ordained into the ministry. It's a long time ago. And when I heard that charge, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Preach the word, preach the word. Preach it when it's easy. Preach it when it's hard. I don't care what you're doing, preach the Word. Preach it to somebody every day. If it's somebody on a corner, preach the Word. Preach it, preach it, live it, eat it, sleep it, live it night, day, day and night. Preach the Word. Preach the Word of faith. Faith in God changes everything. You're a preacher of faith. You're a teacher of faith. You're a liver of faith. You are faith in action. Hallelujah. Preach the word. Hallelujah. And then I got excited about binding and loosing. Dear God, preach it. If binding won't loose it. 
If losing won't fix it, bind it. You are the name of Jesus going somewhere to take place and bring healing and life into the lives of people. Amen. 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 Commencement day. Well, like the boy said, I'm commencing to fix to start. And today you commencing to fix to start. You have started and you have accomplished. When I was so really worried and, and, and frightened, I was supposed to register the next day at ORU. No money, two little children. And I, I knew I was supposed to be there. I said, Gloria, we go up there, we'll starve out. She said, Kenneth, we're starving now. We might as well starve in the will of God is out. That made a lot of sense. <laughs> so here we went. <laughs> I mean, zero money. And I was supposed to register the next morning, 24th January, 1966 or 67. I don't know. What am I going to do? I just went in there and fell on the floor. I said, Glory, if I have to, I'm going to pray all night long. And I just went in and started praying in tongues as hard and fast as I could. I mean, and I, you know, you can pray in the spirit and think at the same time. Thank God. And I thought, and I'm just going. I wonder if I would be quiet if he would say something to me. <laughs> like that right in here, very strongly right in here. It's about time. I haven't been able to get a word in edgewise. Get up on your feet, man. He said, I sent you here and I'll take care of you here. They can't make a preacher out of you. I, they can only train you. I called you. I made you a preacher. You don't begin your ministry after you get out of school. It starts now because you're in my perfect will. Do you understand? I said, yes, amen, sir. I'm going in the morning. Never did have any more cares about the money. Somehow he said, I'll take care of this. I had a dilemma. All I knew how to do was fly airplanes. If I go to the airport and get a job, I can't go to school. If I go to school, I can't, I can't go fly. What am I going to do? I registered. I was so excited, but what am I, what am I, what am I going to do? 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 <laughs> My feet stuck to the floor and out of the ground out in front of the LRC. I said, what is it, Lord? He said, go back and go to the sixth floor. Now I had been sternly warned as a student that is administration, that is where Oral Roberts' office is, that's where Dr. Messick's office is, and you stay off of that sixth floor. Mm. I said, Lord, I can't go up there. That's the Vatican. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where that came from. And but he turned my feet loose. I could have gone home or go up there. My choice. So I turned around and I went to the elevator, Terry, and I couldn't do it. I, I pushed the fifth floor. <laughs> well, hey, this is ORU's first year. That later became the library, but there was not a book in there. It was a big, huge, empty room. He said, I said the sixth floor. And I, I didn't know what I was going to say when I got there. Okay, here I go. It looked like the last mile. I don't know these people. And Ruth Rooks was at her desk. I didn't know who Ruth Rooks was, but she's the only secretary Oral Roberts ever had. One of the most lovely, beautiful, gorgeous believer that I have ever met in my entire life. But I walked up in front of her and this just came out in my mouth. I, I said, uh, my name's Kenneth Copeland and I'm, I'm a commercially rated pilot 
and I know this ministry has an airplane and uh, I need all the help I can get. I just registered. Thank you very much. And I turned around standing right behind me was Oral Roberts. Now he's about this much taller than me. He felt like he was this much taller. I was right in his face. I really, I'm not exaggerating this. I said, I didn't even have a name tag. I couldn't see who I was. I said, he might as well have said, I'm God. Who are you? I said, I said, I'm Kenneth Copeland. He said, I understand you're a commercially rated pilot. I said, yes, sir, I am. Can you handle our airplane? I said, yes, sir, I can. He said, um, two weeks ago, I started to hire a new co-pilot, but the Spirit of God said, no, there's a student coming and I want him to have the job and you're my man. He turned around, he turned around to Mrs. Rooks and he said, uh, uh, call Bob DeWeese. He was captain of the airplane. He said, call Bob DeWeese and tell him I got our co-pilot and turned around and went in his office. It started a relationship that lasted till he went home. Just because God found me faithful and I, I wanted to so badly. I wanted to get up off that floor and go on back home. I was frightened. I was a scripturally illiterate. I, didn't, I was shocked when I found out Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John told the same story. <laughs> but Gloria and I were born again six months after we got married. Three months later, both of us were baptized in the Spirit of God. Both of us still don't know anything about the Bible. All I do is just talk in tongues and loved every second of it. And I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> do you see what I'm telling you? Be faithful to him. Be faithful to him. Now I'll close with this, with what my father in the faith, Oral Roberts said to me. Just very soon, after I, I began as co-pilot on that airplane, Colin Steele, what a man of God. He was in charge of all of the crusades, all everything that was on the road. And I was in two of the last three tent meetings that they had. And they had the invalid room, you know, big crowds make very, very sick people, very, very nervous. And then they separated people that were stage four and a lot of things and, and, and anywhere from 50 to maybe 200 people in the invalid room. I was on my way in Oklahoma City to the venue. It's very quiet in the car. He wouldn't speak to anybody. He wouldn't speak to Evelyn on the day that he preached his own wife because he was so totally immersed in that place of miracles and that manifestation that he had in his right hand. And he just wouldn't talk to you. He's very quiet in that car. And this day, he very rarely ever said anything to me in the car. But this day he did and he was, and he was loud about it. He said, Kenneth, oh man, I jumped. I said, yes, sir. He said, always do these three things and you will never fail. He said, Kenneth, people will always tell you you can't do it. That's the way they did him. Find out the perfect will of God. That's when you ask your questions. That's when you seek the word. That's when you, that's when you spend time on your face and you find out, you find it out. You find it out yourself. And don't move till you know. 
find out the will of God. Confer no longer with flesh and blood and then get your job done at all costs. And he went back to me. And I was just fast as I could get him inside that building, I wrote it down. And we still do it to say the same way today. Get your job done at all costs. Preach the word. Preach it in season. Preach it out of season. Be instant. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Number four, never believe what others say about you. Never believe what others say about you. Did you hear me? Don't ever believe what others say about you. Whether they're saying it to you, especially if they're saying it to you. Back, (laughs) oh, I had just gone out of high school and I'm flip flopping around trying to go to college and couldn't. and, And that's a long story that I won't get into. But anyway, my mother decided to go to a, a small local uh, school. And, uh, and so I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going over there with her and, and we'll have fun together and I'll take a few English courses. I, I really enjoy, you can't tell it now, but I really enjoy <laughs> studying the English language. I, 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 st- I still do my best to speak good grammar and some kind, sometimes it ain't all that good, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It is not all that good, thank you. <laughs> I went and tried out, for, you know, for the school choir. And the choir director said, Kenneth, you have a nice little voice, but you probably can't make a living with it. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> and then, I wanted to take him a copy of Pledge of Love (laughs) that got on the billboard charts, bouncing back from second and third, almost making it into the the number one slot. Johnny Mathis and I were bumping head and head and that wonderful Elvis Presley came along (laughs) and blew us both off of the charts. Uh, but I, you know, I was sorely tempted to take him a copy of my record. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bless his heart. I wasn't supposed to be there. I saw an interview. The interviewer was interviewing Bob Iger. And Bob was first in radio and trying to do the, I mean, and then in television, trying to do the weather. And, 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 <laughs> and this man said, Iger, you are unpromotable. But he said, you know, I, don't, I didn't believe that. Well, Bob Iger today is a CEO of Disney. Unpromotable which means you're a dummy. (laughs) Don't believe what they say. Believe what the Word of God says about you. Believe what the Master says to you and about you. And live in order to die. What do I mean by that? Live big for Jesus and die big for God. Hallelujah. And listen to this. I learned a long time ago, particularly that experience I had at ORU, that
Jesus, sir, I am yours to command. You are my commander in chief. I'm a very strong willed man, always have been. I'm very strong willed and I only have one will and I will to do your will. I'm yours to command, sir. If he says something to me that I just, oh, oh well, I'll t- sir, I'm willing to be willing. Just correct me. I'm yours to correct. I'm yours to protect. I'm yours. Gloria said something to me that changed my life forever. And I'll close by saying it to you. I was sitting in her study and I had come to a place where you know, I was looking out the back toward the out of backyard and out across Eagle Mountain Lake there. And I, 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 I didn't know, I didn't really have it in my heart what I was to do next and it began to bother me. She walked around behind me and she put her hands on my shoulders. She said, Kenneth, Jesus finds no fault in you and neither do I. I find no fault in you tonight and neither does Jesus. Father, thank you for this marvelous, marvelous, fine class of graduates of 2020 the first graduating class. And we're so thrilled with them. We thank you for leading them and guiding them, protecting them. And we plead the blood of Jesus over them. And we thank you and praise you and worship you. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to leave. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. 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 Help her, Mike. Bless its heart. I, I want to lay hands on her. Oh, just, just hold, just turn around. Here. I find no fault with you and in you, darling. Neither does God. And by the authority of God as a minister of the gospel, pain and inner turmoil, you take your hands off God's property and you do it now in the name of Jesus whose I am and whom I serve. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just lift our hands yes. to the Lord right now. Glorify yes. Him. Yes. Magnify you, Lord. Thank you. Cristelo urta elena moyen gele bes tofro esco plida. It is not a coincidence that someone is being delivered from the pain of her heart. Yeah at the first commencement message to the first graduating class of KCP. I heard the Lord say it. I heard the Lord say it. I heard the Lord say it. I heard him say it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you and keep you all the days of your life and your ministry. In the name of Jesus, go into all the world 
and preach this gospel to every creature. Every creature. Thank you, Jesus. Lay hands on the sick and they will come. Preach, teach, and Thank heal you, Jesus. like Jesus. Praise. And take this gospel yes. from the top of the world <laughs> to the bottom and all the way around the middle. God bless you all. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God.